Number 16. Assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with a solution containing a common ion. Show that the changes in the initial concentrations of the common ion can be neglected. And then we have our example here. We have TLCL solid, and this is in 1.250 molarity of HCl. Now, this question can't be done without knowing the solubility product of the solid that's going to be dissolved, right? It's undergoing dissolution. So just know that KSPs are always going to be for starting solids, and in this case, it's the TLCL. So the KSP, I went in the back of the textbook to find out what that KSP is, 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. But in order to write out the formula, we need to first have the balanced equation. So let's start with that. We have TLCL solid, and this comes to equilibrium because we're talking about K values between the two ions. The break is between the two elements, right? TL and CL. So TL and CL. But what are the charges in the upper right-hand corner? Well, it looks like a one-to-one -to, -one to me, right? One TL, one CL. And for ionic compounds, halogens are always going to be a negative one charge. So if that's a negative one, the TL has to be a plus one in order to get a zero overall charge. Uh, they have charges, so that's aqueous. Just make sure that it's balanced, but one TL, one TL, one CL, one CL. So we're good. We go on to the next part of the question. And the next part is to write the KSP formula, right? The general KSP formula is this right here. It's just equal to the products raised to the coefficients because no solids allowed, no reactants allowed. So KSP equals the concentration of TL plus one times the concentration of CL minus one. Just make sure that you're raising them to their coefficients, but for both of them, I don't see a coefficient in here, which just means that you have one of each. So you could raise both of them to the first, but that's just the same thing as what it is now. The KSP value is 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth, but we don't know what the concentration values of TL and CL are. So that's when we start putting down variables, but this is where you should look to see if you have a common ion, AKA just any number that's attached to another compound. And yes, we do. We have HCl, but HCl should be like screaming at you, right? What is HCl? We've seen this time and time again in the last chapter, the acid and base chapter. This is a strong acid, one of your six strong acids. And if it's a strong acid, it's gonna break down 100% of the time. So I'm just going to start that off over here. HCl will break down, what kind of arrow was that? Break down 100% into its two ions, H and Cl. The break is between the H and the Cl, right? Cl has to be a minus one, and the H is the plus one. They're both aqueous. They're all aqueous. Everybody's aqueous. Okay. Now, just make sure it's balanced, but it's all balanced, right? So I'll just highlight these and I'll say this is a one to one to one. One HCl for every one H for every one Cl. So if you start off with 1.250 molarity for HCl, and they should all be the same number, what would be the concentration of H plus and what would be the concentration of the Cl minus? Yeah, they would all be the same but you only care about the one that is the same between the two compounds. Don't do more work than you have to. In this case, the common ion is the Cl minus. The Cl minus is in both equations, right? H plus is not up here, vice versa, right? So I don't even care about this. Just take the ratio for what you start with for what the common ion is. It's a one to one. So I know I have 1.250 molarity for Cl minus. And since this is what the solution is in, in the first place, in the beginning, this number is a initial concentration. And remember, anytime that you have initial concentrations, we have to do, drum roll please, everyone's favorite, the ice table. <laughs> I know, 
I know. But uh, hopefully by now it will get a little easier because it's like the same over and over and over again, right? No solids. So for case and purposes of answering the question, we don't care about this. <laughs> and we started off with 1.250 for the Cl minus. We didn't start with any TLs, so zero. Remember, change is your plus Xs and minus Xs, but the products, you got zero. You could only go up from there. So this would be plus X. Keep in mind that it's a plus 1X. And the same thing here, plus X. Your initials, your E lines, are just your initial and your, sorry, your equilibrium, your E line, is just combination of initial and change. So 0 plus X is just X. 1.250 plus X is 1.250 plus X. And these are going to be your concentrations that you're going to plug in here. So TL is just going to be X, and CL is 1.250 plus X. However, we're going to try to show that the change of the initial is going to be neglected. Because if you have a number and then you have plus X, if we leave that plus X in there, we're going to have to do the quadratic equation. And we try to get by it if we can. So we're going to assume, we're going to assume that this starting amount is way larger than the plus X. So large that if you added that small number, it's not going to change this number much, especially since our Ka value is like time sent to the negative fourth. So I'm going to assume that we don't need this to, you know, for the math, and then we're going to do the 5% rule. So let's see, 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth, and this is equal to x times 1.250. This one's an easy one. Just divide by 1.250 on both sides. Right, we get rid of this, voila. And now we get x equals 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 1.250. So I get 1.36. I mean, if you wanted to keep it as four sig figs, just add a zero at the end. Does anybody care? No. And that's molarity because we're talking about concentration. Let's just make sure that we can neglect that change. The 5% rule, which I'll say, 5% rule, is when you take your number, so this value, and divide it by the initial, 1.250. You times it by 100. If this answer is five or less, we assumed correctly and we could keep the X value as it is. So this divided by 1.25 times 100, yeah, I don't even get 1%. So since that number is so low, I can say, thank goodness, I don't need the quadratic equation and I'm gonna keep this as my X value. Now what we do is we just answer the question. We gotta find those concentrations. So we go back to the E line. We say that, okay, AG, where did that come from? <laughs> the, the last one that I did. TL plus one was X. And literally, that was the X value. So that's the uh, concentration for that one. And then the CL was 1.250 plus the X value. So you just got to plug in that X value with 1.250. So 1.25 plus 1.360 times 10 to the negative fourth. And yeah, it, uh, yeah, it didn't even change it. So 1.250 molarity. And those are your two answers. And that's the answer for this question. Whoop, whoop. Okay. I really hope that this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Oh, and let me just say that this checked the 5% rule. Okay, now we're done. Thank you. I really hope this helped. Go check the channel out. We also have physics and math videos at the moment. Maybe we can help you on those classes as well. Hope you have a great day, and I'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.